In the heart of Moscow today, at a high security briefing, a weapon long shrouded in secrecy stepped into the spotlight. Russian President Vladimir Putin declared the successful test of what he described as a unique weapon, one that no other country in the world possesses. The 9MS-730 Burovesnik, known to NATO as SSCX-9 Skyfall, is a nuclear-powered cruise missile that, according to Russia, flew 14,000 kilometers and remained in the sky for about 15 hours. This is the headline. The story is far more complex. If these numbers hold up, what we are witnessing is a dramatic step in strategic weapons development, one that transforms the equation of global deterrence. But if we dig deeper, we find that the Burovesnik has its roots in broken promises, technical headaches, and deep strategic signaling. In this video for History Nerd, we'll dive into the claims, the reality, and the implications. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support helps us dig into the stories behind the headlines. We must begin with the origin story. In March 2018, President Putin revealed six new strategic weapons meant to counter Western missile defense systems. One of them was the Burovesnik, described in Russian sources as a nuclear-powered cruise missile capable of flying almost indefinitely, changing direction mid-flight and penetrating missile defenses by approaching from unconventional vectors. Unlike conventional cruise missiles, which burn jet or rocket fuel and are constrained by range, Burovesnik is reported to use a compact nuclear reactor to generate thrust. Its promotional lines speak of near-unlimited range, anywhere on the globe, evade all missile defense systems. Chinese military affairs experts later called it the first of its kind, a genuine paradigm shift. But as grand as the vision sounded, the devil was in the details. Designing a missile that can fly for hours at low altitude, unpredictable routing, while containing a nuclear reactor, managing heat, radiation shielding and guidance, is a massive engineering challenge. Russian technical journals had already estimated theoretical ranges of 19,000, 20,000 kilometer, but stressed that the real problem lay in thermal loads during sustained flight and protecting sensors and guidance systems from reactor emissions. From the outset, analysts greeted the claims with skepticism. The concept of a nuclear air-breathing cruise engine had been explored during the Cold War by the U.S. under Project Pluto, but technical, safety, and treaty issues caused cancellation. For Russia, the path would be even more difficult in a period of economic and industrial constraints. Between 2018 and today, Burovesnik has featured in Russian strategic weapons announcements, but publicly verifiable test data remain thin. One of the most damaging incidents was an explosion in 2019 at the Arctic test site near the White Sea. Reports link the blast to Burovesnik-related technology. Multiple nuclear specialist fatalities were reported and trace radiation readings emerged. That incident underscored two things. This weapon wasn't theoretical anymore, it was dangerous, and that proof of concept was still far from operational. Through the early 2020s, Rumors circulated of multiple unsuccessful test flights, engine failures, guidance issues, and reactor system malfunctions. Western intelligence sources, while concerned, categorized the missile as still under development. So when President Putin came before the press and announced that key objectives have now been achieved, while admitting much work remains to be done, observers saw the moment less as mission complete and more as signaling readiness. Now we arrive at the announcement of October 21st, 2025, briefed formally 26 to committee, when General Valery Gerasimov told the president that the missile flew for 15 hours and traveled 14,000 an hour in Kundur. Russian state media described the mission as a decisive test, the final trials before deployment. But key questions remain. Was the flight profile fully validated? Were the reactor and engine performance data independently verified? Did the missile carry a live warhead, or was this a conventional dummy payload? No uncontested external confirmation has emerged publicly. If the claims are credible, Burovesnik would fundamentally alter how deterrence and first strike, Chong's second strike dynamics are conceived. 
A nuclear-powered missile can loiter for hours, shift course unpredictably, and attack from unexpected vectors, complicating detection, tracking, and intercept. Chinese experts quoted in the Global Times described it as non-traditional weapon system that extends the deterrent envelope beyond fixed ICBM trajectories and bomber flight paths. Imagine this. Instead of a missile lofting on a ballistic arc and being spotted by infrared SAT systems, you have a cruise missile skimming at a few hundred meters altitude, flying thousands of kilometers, possibly circling for hours, then diving on a target. For missile defense planners in Europe or North America, that is game-changing. However, range isn't everything. The missile's speed, signature, guidance accuracy, and survivability in a contested environment matter. Reports emphasize the missile is subsonic and therefore more vulnerable to detection over time. Some analysts argue that the strategic niche of Burovesnik is not in replacing ICBMs, but in creating redundancy, confusion, and attrition-style deterrence, once frontline defenses are degraded. Moreover, mass deployment presents real obstacles. Launch infrastructure, nuclear fuel handling, operator safety, basing vulnerabilities, treaties and international reaction, all weigh heavily. Politically, Russia's announcement is also a message. At a moment of high tension in Ukraine and Western arms supply to Kiev, Putin used the test to signal that Moscow still commands advanced strategic systems and that any escalation must be viewed through a broader prism of deterrence. That helps reshape the bargaining environment, even if the missile is not yet operationally fielded. A nuclear-powered cruise missile is unprecedented. The stakes go beyond military. They are environmental, diplomatic, and treaty-bound. The mishap in 2019 and other failures highlight the risk of reactor accidents radiation contamination, and uncontrolled fallouts. Chinese military observers warn of potential nuclear contamination or a meltdown if the system fails or is intercepted. From an arms control perspective, Burovesnik operates outside a neatly defined treaty regime. With the INF Treaty defunct, New START expiring in 2026, and the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons not covering nuclear-powered cruise missiles, the weapon introduces novel escalation pathways. NATO and U.S. must now evaluate how to integrate low-flying, long-endurance strategic missiles into their tracking and interception architectures. So what signals will tell us whether Borovesnik is truly deployed and credible? Three things. One, independent radiation or atmospheric monitoring that shows reactor-powered flight signatures. Two, deployment or movement of missile launch infrastructure, pad, brigade placement, logistics. Three, operational test firings with live warheads or realistic payloads beyond announcements. Until these appear, the missile remains best described as a major part of Russia's strategic messaging toolkit. Yet the fact that Moscow announced tests complete means analysts cannot ignore it. In short, Russia has announced what it calls the decisive test of its nuclear-powered cruise missile. If true, the 14,000-kilometer flight and 15-hour endurance mark a paradigm shift, but neither is the capability yet independently verified nor clearly deployable at scale. The weapon sits in the intersection of engineering ambition, strategic signaling, and arms control anxiety. For viewers of History Nerd, take away that this story isn't just about a new missile, it's about how strategic deterrence is evolving in the 21st century. It's about weapons that loiter, pivot unexpectedly, and challenge fixed defense architectures. Thanks so much for your support. If you found this breakdown useful, please hit like, share, and subscribe to the channel so I can keep bringing you deep dives like this. Let me know in the comments. Do you believe the Bureau of Esnick claims? Or is this another headline weapon still in the making? Stay curious. Stay informed. I'll see you next time. History nerd.